Howdy. That's all my friends out in YouTube land today. I hope this finds you well and I hope you enjoying some decent weather where you're at. We're trying to get to spring hard as we can. If you watched yesterday's video, you watched me working here on a gourd. I'm, I'm working on a birdhouse made out of a gourd that was grown out in the garden. Now, I showed you how to do the prep on it yesterday, and now I'm going to show you how to put the uh, stencil to it or the pattern to it, and I'm going to show you how to engrave it, and then I'm going to show you how to paint it. So with all that being said, um, we'll get started into it here. Now, I've got my, my peel and stick um, pattern that I've cut out off the sheet, and this is that really thin plastic that we've used on so many other projects that I have done here. I got this from the Welburn Gourd Farm. They have packs of different kinds of, of uh, designs. And this one is called a vine pattern. And they got a couple different ones in the pack there that you can use. I like this one pretty good. I thought this would look pretty on it. And as it turns out, this goes perfectly from one side of the gourd to the other side of the gourd where the hole is. Get it underneath the camera there so you can see it. It goes from one side to the other just perfectly on there. Now, I don't think I've ever showed you how to lay one of these on, but this is going on a curved surface, so this will be even better to show you how this works. But you just peel the backing off of the pattern to lay it right on your project. Now I'm going to take it right up there next to the hole. And then I'm just going to lay it right around the gourd. Now, this is not going to lay flat to begin with because the gourd is curved. We're working with a curved surface. Luckily, this stuff peels up pretty easy in the beginning before you go to engraving on it. Once you go to engraving on it, then it sticks down pretty tight. And going to use some scissors on this to trim it. Now I left a lip on the, the edge of it there where it peeled off of the paper and I'm going to just go taking the scissors I'm going to cut that lip right off of there. We don't need all that extra bulk. You see I take the scissors and I just cut. I don't want to cut my pattern you know where, where the black ink is on there around them flowers and leaves and vines and things. We just want to take this lip off of it to begin with. And I'm going to take the backing paper and the piece I just cut off of there and I'm going to throw that in the trash bag over here so it's out of the way. Now, I just want to go to laying that down on this gourd. Just go to pressing it. And there's going to be spots where it ain't going to want to lay flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the scissors and we're going to nick right into the pattern. We can cut some of this excess piece off of it over here. Get that out of the way. Put that over in the trash can. Oops, well, we tried to. It's sticking to me like glue. We can take the scissors and we can nip little places in it to get it to lay a little flatter on the sides. What we're after is to get this black part that where the pattern is to lay down on the gourd. And there may be little spots like this where it doesn't make exactly up, but we can even that up with the engraving tool. And if you get some little wrinkles in it down here where there's no pattern, it doesn't matter because we're not engraving on that part anyway, are we? I'm going to come in here and make a little nick in the pattern with the scissors right in the middle of the pattern paper. I can take the utility knife to that too, except I don't see it handy. Ain't that the way of it? Every time I go to use my tools, I can't find the ones I want. Now we we'll use this one. A little hole in that we can get the scissors into and just nip right around that pattern there to make a little slice in it 
so we can curve it a little bit better. And you just have to, whoops, knocking things over up here. My magnifying glass took over my little cup that I have my pencils and stuff in and decided to send it to Godlin. Just take your time with it and keep pressing it out the way you want it to go. Now I'm even going to, let's see. I'm going to make a slit in it up here. And I'm going to cut right around the edge of that flower. To even this out a little bit. Let's lay that flower down on there. So that it's nice and tight to the gourd. Then we're going to take a little of this leaf off here because we're going to overlay it. Slice that off. So it's going to look like the leaf lays right underneath the flower. Just fitting the pattern to the gourd on there. Well, sticking to me, couldn't get it off. There we go. It's going to look like that leaf lays right underneath that flower. We're going to work it that way all the way around this pattern, around the gourd. That's going to look like this flower is over top of that one because basically that is the way it is on the pattern itself. So we push that up and then any part that's going to lay over top of that, we cut loose to put this flower underneath that flower. Press it down nice and flat. Now we got a spot right here along this leaf where we can cut this piece off. Right in here. Make a slit in it so it can lay down. Right there. Move that one out. So we took out the bulk right there and we got both leaves. They're just coming right, touching each other at the point. Just move all this out up here. Now we can reposition this piece a little bit here. Since we got it coming on down. Flatten these leaves out just a little bit here. Now, right here on the end of it, I've got a bunch of unnecessary pattern paper that I can get rid of. That'll eliminate some bulk. So we don't need this big old piece here because it hasn't got any pattern on it. And we'll take this and we just keep pressing it down. 
just pity patting it down. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to loosen up a piece right here, but going right in between the leaves on that to let the pattern paper lay a little easier. Got some bulk here I can get rid of. So we'll just lay it down nice and flat there on the gourd. Lay it down and press it down. These pieces along the edge where it wants to stand up a little bit aren't really going to matter that much because there's no pattern on that piece anyway. We just want to make sure we've got the pattern down to the gourd so that we can trace it with the engraving tool. I don't want a whole lot of wrinkles in it, but a few wrinkles aren't going to matter as long as they're not really messing up the pattern. And I think that looks pretty doggone good right there. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now, I'm going to take the engraving tool and we're going to engrave that whole design on this piece. And again, I know that you all don't like to hear the whir of the drill, so I'll be turning the audio off on the video. And you can just watch me do my engraving on here. Put my safety glasses on. Get them scissors out of the way. And we'll kill the audio and you can watch me drill.
Okay, I've got the design etched onto the gourd. I went back over it looking at it real good to make sure that I got all my little lines and stuff in there. Everything seems to be etched on there real good. And I turned off and unplugged my engraver. And now we go to peeling off the pattern. We get all the big edges off of it first. Get that over in the trash can. And then we go to peeling off all the little pieces. Now, anybody that's watched me do this knows that I tell you, got to make sure you get all the pattern paper off because if you don't, when you start to paint, your paint ain't going to stick to your project. We've etched our design right onto the gourd, and I know it doesn't show up very well. It will when we paint it. That's the idea of painting it. We got the design etched onto the, the surface of the gourd. And we're going to come back through and put some paint on that so it shows up a little bit better. I'm going to see if I can raise this camera up some. Move it around here so that maybe you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Here as I work on this. It's going to be moving around a little bit as I pull this paper off of it. Comes off in pieces because every place you etch on that pattern burns right through that paper. Just cuts it right up. So you can see on this side a little bit better. The other side of the gourd's a little darker. We're going to use the gourd dye to paint this. With our Formula 49, it helps that dye. You gotta make sure you get every little bit of that paper off of it. This is a pretty sizable design, so it takes a few minutes to scrape all that mess loose. Working our way around the piece, pulling that paper off of it. Hope you saw how as I worked around that and had wrinkles in it, you know, I just worked past the wrinkles in the pattern to edge it, the design right onto the gourd.
you like what I'm doing here, please give it a thumbs up and share this on your social media so everybody gets to enjoy the process and learns how to get their designs laid into a piece of work and paint things and make pretty things and make decorator pieces that are one of a kind. Noticed with that engraving tool, I didn't push hard. I, I wasn't trying to cut through the gourd. I was just trying to etch the pattern onto the, the gourd. Now, sweep up our little mess here. Off the desk. And I'm going to lay the gourd aside. I'm going to give me a piece of paper towel and we'll get some alcohol and we'll wipe this desk down because any dust that came off of that gourd in the etching process is going to be all over this desk and we're going to wipe all that off of there. See? <laughs> Mess of that came loose. Everything that I etched off that gourd was all over my desk. So, we got that dusted off of there, wiped off of there. And we got our design on our gourd ready to paint. Now, this side's going to be a little bit harder to see. We got some vines and some leaves laid on there. We get it in the light just right. Hmm. My computer's playing havoc with me here. You get this laid in the light just right. You guys ain't going to see it on camera, but I can see where the leaves and stuff are on there. And I'm the one painting it, so it's important for me to be able to see it. Now, we got some different colors of this dye, so we'll get them all out of the bin here and onto the desk where we can see them. Figure out what we want to paint. Let's see. I think there should be another color of it up there. Yep, there it is. Uh, I think everything else up there is alcohol ink. Okay, so we got our Formula 49. Let me get that up here into the camera. Formula 49. This is Gord Master Dyes and Gord Master Formula 49 to use with it. We want to get a little paper towel going, and we want to get our Formula 49. It's a conditioner for the gourd that helps the dye. And, as well, a matter of fact, I'm just going to put it right on the gourd and rub it in. And it conditions the gourd up. There's a piece of pattern I missed. Just wipe it down real good. With the formula 49. Right there where we're going to be painting our design into it. Now I'll put the lid back on that for the moment. I can always Use a little bit of that with the dies. I put it on here. And there again, I'm going to try to position my camera a little bit better. Whoops. It's kind of flipping around on me. There we go. And get the glasses out of the way. Some of the other stuff we got up here on the desk out of the way. 
and I'll get my micro brush out. Another piece of paper towel. Well, no, we can use this one. There we go. Get it folded up here so I have something to wipe my brush on. And now, <clears throat> we know we want to paint the stems and the leaves green, right? So we go through our Gord Master dies. We're going to pick out the green ones here. We've got deep green and we've got a light green. There's the light green. Just a drop or two of it there to start with. And there's the deep green. There's the micro brush. I can hang on to it. Arthritis is kicking up today and won't let me hang on to nothing. Okay, we're going to come in with a little bit of that light green. I'm going to stroke that on them leaves. And I know this is probably not showing up real great for you just yet on here, but you can see where I'm painting. And the design will take shape as I go to putting this to it. A little more light green. Another leaf right there. Let's see here. Trying to decide if I want to go in with any dark green or just keep going with the light green on the leaves. I'm thinking light green probably. Lay them leaves in first, and then I'll come back and do the stems and do the blending for the shading on the leaves. Well, I love these little micro brushes. I get in all the little nooks and crannies there and just... Put that on there so nice. Don't have to worry about getting outside the lines with it because it just it's a tiny. But it really puts the paint to it. Whoever dreamed them up knew what they's doing. See how that engraving just laid the design right in. And it's all you got to do now is color it. Color it and shade it. Whoops. I feel like I'm working with cat paws with this arthritis. My goodness. My thumbs don't want to work. 
I need to get a little more of that green down on the palette there because I'm running shy of it. A tad much of the light green. Right there. Another drop. Did you see how that dye goes a long way? Man. Okay, that's got the base color on the leaves laid in. I wipe my brush off. Then I'm going to take the dark green under these stems. Lines. Look at there. Now, we're going to take a little of the dark green. We're just going to brush it just around the leaf enough to give it a little color in the middle. A little shading there where the Vein runs through. A little more definition, if you will.
All right, now I'm going to set that gourd down there for a second while I wipe this brush off. And now to do the shading on those leaves, now that I got the two colors on, get me a couple of drops of 49 here on the palette. Dip my brush into that. Come back here on my gourd. And where I put that dark green in, I'm just going to stroke it just a little bit with that 49. And that it's just going to blend it right into that light green. So it doesn't look like a big old harsh line in there. Let's pull it out just a little bit. That's your blending solution right there. So this works just like the blending solution with your alcohol inks. It reactivates the paint just a little bit so that it will blend out. I'm going to dab just a little of that off of that particular leaf. There, that's better. Kind of looked like it was pooling. Here's another one. Might need a little dab. Just pull a little paint off if you need to. And that's looking pretty doggone good so far. So far, so good. Now we got to do some flowers. And I think I'm done with that green, so I'm going to get that green palette right up off of the mat so we don't get that mixed up in our paint for our flowers. Now, what color do we want to paint our little flowers? Be the next question. Well, we know we don't want to do green. Let's set the green out of the way here. We've got, um, <clears throat> I've got magenta, I've got garnet, I've got espresso. We don't want to use that. That's brown. And we've got soft beige and I don't want that. We're going to need a little sunflower in the middle of there, I think. And we're going to need, um, let's see. I think I'm going to go with, I like this Caribbean blue. I think it will look pretty with some Caribbean blue flowers on it. So we're going to put a little of that down on the mat. I'm going to keep that yellow handy. Oh, i got to move my leg a little bit. i got to. Pain in my poor old sore arthritic knee. Don't get old. I don't recommend it. <laughs> now we'll be blending this blue on these little flowers to get our sh shading in. But for right now, we just want to lay some color in it. I'm going to leave the, the middles of them empty because that's where we're going to be putting our yellow. That is a pretty shade of blue.
They're a little much blue, so pull some of that loose and stroke it around here on these other leaves. And this is where we fit our pattern. So the one would go right over top of the other flower. And this is the place where that is happening. Okay, painting up there real nice. I'm liking that. Okay, now, sit that down, wipe off the brush. And I want to take a little of this yellow to put the centers in, and then I'll go to blending on the flower. And then I'm going to put another drop of that down there. Okay. Now, 
I'm just holding this with my fingers in the in the hole of the gourd. Just pat that die right into the design. And I can always wipe that off a little bit. We'll come back in and get just a touch of this blue here. Because I need that to go down just a little bit further on that. Pull it out right there a little bit more. There we go. Alright. Blot off my brush. And we'll go back into the yellow. Put it right in the centers of the flowers. I need a little more yellow on the palette. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got a touch of that <coughs> pneumonia stuff I had going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Retouch any of the centers there that need to be retouched. That look, that one's looking real good. That's looking good to me. Okay, we'll set her down here a second while I wipe my brush. Now, we need the 49. We're going to do a little blending. Now let's try not to knock everything over, shall we? <laughs> A calamity Jane. <clears throat> Just take a little of that 49 right there and do a little bit of blending between the yellow and the blue to lighten up the centers. We want it darker to the tips of the petals. See if I can get that under the camera where you can see it. There we go. Let's see how I did that. We got one more flower over here to work on. I'm going to pull a little of that paint out of that right there if we can. Got mighty dark right in there. Let's take paper towel. Now, I don't rub. I just blot. So there's a spot there. It was a little too dark to suit me, so I just blot to pull some of that paint up off of there. Actually, what that is, that's a dark spot in the gourd underneath there. Now that I got the paint pulled back, see that? We'll just come in with a little more yellow right there. Over that spot, a little blending. Blend it right up there on that petal and into that petal. And that's how she looks right there. Got some glare on it, trying to get the glare off of it so you can see it because it's wet, so the lights are <laughs> playing havoc with the color. 
But there you go. And that is our painted birdhouse gourd. I'll make a wire hanger there for the top of it to hang it up with. I'll put a coat of Krylon on it to seal the dye onto it. That would look pretty hanging on anybody's patio or in their garden. And I hope you like this little project that I've done. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Share it on your social media so everybody gets to learn how to be creative and crafty. Try to try to center that up there so that the design shows. There we go. That looks like a pretty little picture right there. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you could paint the entire gourd if you wanted to, you know, whatever color you wanted to paint it. I think it looks pretty nice just like this myself. So this is where I'm going to leave it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. I'd love to have you as a subscriber here to the channel and a regular uh, commenter and a uh, person to put likes on the, the videos if you like what I'm doing and learn to be creative. So with all that, there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's Crafty. Be like Brenda.